Yeah, today Travis we're going to be talking about potatoes. Potatoes. Everyone loves potatoes. But how do you turn potatoes into a tribe biz, right? How do you make that a sexy little brand that people want to, you know, like rally behind and get a part of? And uh, we're going to see. We're going to walk through this. We haven't joined the membership. We've just, we heard about it from our mom. Uh, and she said, this will probably be a great topic for you guys. You know, we're always looking for a, a good hero journey, a good story that can become a business, right? That's a big principle of the tribe method. So all the secrets are in the story. So we're just going to dive around this man's website. We've poked around and mapped out a little bit about how that meshes with our tribe brand identity formula and how that framework really works together to, to create all of the messaging, because if the messaging is off, everything else is broken, right? Messaging is that one domino that when knocked down will help the rest, you know, it'll help you create a good sales page. It'll help you do your marketing. It'll help you, you know, like waste less money on ads, trying to talk to, you know, the right people. It'll keep the wrong people out. It'll just make your conversions better. It'll make the back end rally a little bit better, a little bit easier, keep the narrative nice and tight. So you can't build a strong community with the wrong customers. So if you want a banging community with good retention, it all starts on who you bring in. So that's where we don't have access to the back end right now, but you can see enough from the front end to see what's working, what's not. Essentially why he's killing it on the backbone of potatoes. So we're talking Spud Fit. Spud Fit, baby, which is a great name. We love when the name can be um the result and maybe the identity but also maybe the secret sauce right like there's a few things that can work in for creating a great name whether that's like the result that we're going to the way we get there the methodology to we get the the result um or more importantly the collective identity but you know he does a good job with spud fit and it's just right on the nose so definitely a point for that one but let's share the screen and see what we got bring it up bring him up bring him up Okay. So let's see if we can move that bar. Yeah. All right. So yeah, this is Spud Fit. So I mean, all of already it's a it's a great website. You can already see how, you know, like the, the fruit and veg move right in the middle, right in the bag, back of the net. So it's a it really pulls you in. It's very clean, you know, and you can already see from this, it's just like he's not trying to that's the problem with like fitness and nutrition. Like a lot of them are very much me brands, right? So it's like, look at me, look what I did. You can do that too. really puff up the chest. But we know when you're rallying people that it's about who are we together, right? Instead of being that like guy on the stage saying, look at me, it's about that uh, guide on the side. And so I feel like he's killing it with being that guide on the side, just saying like, hey, check out what, what worked for me. And this could probably work for you backed by, you know, science, science, science. Yeah, even the testimonials, it says people like us. People like us. Very inclusive. And you can tell just from the branding, you can see how he's like, one, there's not images of him like juiced and jacked and ripped. He's got his clothes on. He just looks healthy. And his colors are like very white, very bright, very in inviting. And you can just tell like this caters to probably that over 40 mom audience would just feel right at home here. Yeah, that older demographic. Yeah. So when we look at like his archetype is very much like that everyday guy, right? He's just saying, this is what worked for me. You know, he looks like a good neighbor. He looks like good dinner party company. Yeah. So we like to use the brand archetype to give the guardrails for how you express the personality of your brand, because that's how you attract the right people. And so, yeah, he's probably most of his um, people are, uh, they've tried everything and they're burned out in the industry. You know, uh, his audience is definitely people who, you know, can't stick to healthy eating. They have emotional eating. They have um, problems with binging and food addiction and cravings and all this stuff. So he comes off very relatable. And like from the start, you can see he's validating their problem. It's like, they just can't stick to healthy eating. So sure, a diet might work for them but it hasn't. And so that's really the crossroads they're at is like, they need to lose weight. He's not saying like lose 20 pounds in 30 days or whatever. He's saying can't stick to healthy eating. So you can really see like his guardrails and his niche. So he's really calling out the right people. He's not leading with this huge result. He's just calling in the right people. 
but then you can see 95% lost weight with our approach. 94% dramatically reduced or eliminated cravings. Like he knows the problems they have. He knows they're here to lose weight and he knows they're probably not losing weight because of these cravings and addictions because they can't stick to healthy eating. So he's really validating them right from the jump. Well, and again, we say all the stories, all the answers are in your story, right? And so it's really about how your hero journey works with your perfect audience. And most people are like, well, I can target these people. I can target these people. It's always crazy when I see men and they're like, yeah, I specialized in, in like women's fitness. And it's like, you've never been a woman. That's, that's, there's just a disconnect there, right? Like, whereas this guy, he just has like so much written in his story that he just has to target everybody who faced the same things, which is, you know, feeling powerless around your trigger foods, blaming yourself or falling off the wagon. His story is very much about like all the diets work until they don't. Right. And so I like how his, uh, he's talks about Oakham's protocol where normally the simplest answer is the right one. And so he just set out and we were like really trying to find his his HJ, his hero journey. And so when we look at, uh, you know, I saw this video, it was eight years ago. This is what started it all. He was carrying six kilos of potatoes from the shops, walking home, filming himself, just like, you can tell he was deflated and just beaten up by life and cravings and his like addictions and like all of the problems. And he was just a real one, literally just walking on a gloomy day in Australia with six kilos of potatoes in his pocket, in his backpack and just walking and filming. And he's like, this is me. So he talks about how he's overweight. This is like the heaviest he's ever been. He's 150 kilos. He has got joint pain. He's depressed. Right. And you can just tell in the video, like he's low. Um, and so, yeah, he was just, he was just a real one and that's what works, right. Being vulnerable and just being a real one. Whereas most people are like, I need to be super credible. I need to be, you know, top of the field. I need to be top 1%. It's like, no, you don't not for a tribe brand. You just have to be a real one. You have to be vulnerable and just share your story. And so then you see his before and after and you're like, well, of course it were, you don't even have to like say anything. You just have to show, like, you can tell, like there's vitality in his face. He's happy. Um, you know, definitely not overweight, like, you know, and then all of his pictures with, with the woman, right? Like you can tell he's, he's happy. He's got his life together. And so it talks about, like we say, all of the answers are in your story. So it shows his before and after, you know, banging, talked about how I felt amazing and incredible. And I still do my sleep improved joint pain from old football injuries went away. I gained energy, improved mental clarity and focus lost 52.3 kilograms, 117 pounds over the course of the year. By far the best part is I no longer suffer with clinical depression and anxiety. And so for him, it was just a test, right? He's just like, what if I could only eat one thing? And he just chose potatoes because he just saw, you know, throughout the like few hundred years, whether people chose to or had to, people could live off potatoes, you know, like 6% of the calories come from protein, like 4% come from fats or whatever, like all the science was there. And he's like, okay, I just need to battle my cravings, battle my demons. Right. And he's like, I just need to do something so simple that it has like such strict guardrails that I just kind of can't fail. And so it was just a test and just, it worked out. Right. And so when we're really looking at this story, then how does this story make like a full tri brand? Like what are all the elements you need to pick out from the story to really rally the right people and like put them on a journey together? Where they pay and stay and tell their friends. So I can see Rick has got some things in here. So yeah, it's like, who are we together? Then he knows like he's tried every diet. So he was a serial dieter and he knows his audience are also people who have tried everything and nothing's working. So obviously the biggest pain point that he's promoting is lose weight, but it's lose weight without going hungry. So he knows their problems. They've got food addiction, they're binge eating, they're emotional eating. There's also the cost of healthy eating. If you scroll over, I think I have one more point about the problems that confusion. Yeah. Every diet is so different from the other ones. So people are just like, oh my God, I've tried everything. And I don't know like what that one formula or success framework is here. I just, I can't stick to healthy eating no matter what that diet is. So that's where he eliminates all those problems by getting to commit to one thing. But the desire here is lose weight in a sustainable way. Right? So if we look at his brand archetype, then the everyday guy, I mean, every coach is going to be a hero brand because you're giving them the tools and everything they need to become the person they want to be. So that's more in the business model of coaching. But we like to look at 
the other archetype is how you express that. So again, he's not trying to be like this masculine mojo guy with like black backgrounds, big, bold, like yellow, red fonts or whatever. Like it's all very bright and welcoming and airy and borderline feminine. I'd say it's just approachable, right? You can just it looks like a marker. Trust. Yeah. Yeah. It looks authentic, which if we look at the everyday guy, you know, he's not trying to say, look at me, look what I've done. He's like, look at what's possible for us, right? It's all about simplicity, humility, and authenticity. So that's why he's going raw on the video to say, I'm tired and I'm overweight. This is what I'm doing. So a lot of humility, a lot of authenticity, but ultimately it's simplicity. So if we look at the methodology he's promoting, it's like these people want to lose weight and they can't. So his idea is like, if we scroll up, He doesn't have a name for his methodology and new plan, but we know that he's all about starches. His belief is that potatoes are the perfect food because humans need starches to survive. And he's got like a lot to back that up. But ultimately, it's like lose weight without going hungry or fighting willpower or measuring food because he knows these are the reasons people fall off a diet. So he's just got a cheap and simple approach. Eat potatoes. And he doesn't say like, do it for 30 days. He has a one day challenge because he believes that's the foundation of a successful diet is just being able to do one day and seeing how you feel, proving to yourself that you can do it and proving to yourself that you can feel good just eating potatoes. But like, even if we take it one step back, his belief is in starches as a food group and that's what humans need. Uh, but we only know that because my mom's in the program. If you look at his front end, he's just trying to get you to eat potatoes for one day. So it's not like he's trying to educate you on all the science behind why you need to eat starches. He's just telling you to eat a potato for a day. So it's like, how do you take the core of your messaging and give it that sex appeal so that it's tangible and attractive on the front end? Because these people don't know him. There's a lot of social proof on his website that makes you feel like, oh, I could do this because it is working for him and a lot of other people. But, you know, again, they've tried everything. So if he had to educate them on why starches are good for them, it's going to create a lot of other questions like, do red peppers have starches? Is that allowed? You know, uh, instead he's just like, eat a potato. So there's a lot of sex appeal there. And I guess my mom is not in his program, but she's done enough research to uh, give us some insights here. But yeah, his belief are just potatoes are the perfect food. So everything's so simple on the front end. And I'm sure in the back end, there's a lot more education, but on the front end, he doesn't try to confuse people with all of the nuances and science behind it, he's like, just eat potatoes. Spud fit, baby. Because the, the confused mind never buys. And that's the problem is a lot of people will just like really heavily educate on the front end and then have a, just a lot of analytics, a lot of data. But the human brain, it buys on emotion, justifies with logic. So if you can just use the emotion and keep it really simple, it works because of this, right? That's why we like having the methodology being a uh, unique name which you could tell he's missing, which, I mean, he could have a, he could have an easy one, right? Like if we're looking at what's missing here, then the, you know, who are we together? Where are we going? But how do we get there? You know, that's a big part of it. We like to have, you know, just like paleo or keto, they're very unique opportunities and they're very different from each other with its own belief system and philosophy. And, you know, and so if he had his own, then this would really solidify things further. Um, so he's kind of missing that methodology name, but underneath the methodology name, the brain is still like, well, why does it work? Right. And you're like, well, keto works because it puts your body into ketosis. Right. So it's like, oh, I guess I haven't put my body into ketosis. So like, maybe this will work. And so that, you know, secret sauce, that new opportunity, then he does have that down pretty good because you're like starches, you know, it's like you haven't done like a starch, like a starch diet. Right. And so, or even just like, you haven't just tried to eat potatoes. And so it's just like unique because it's so different. Like the man that ate nothing but potatoes for 366 days, you know, there's some uniqueness there. It's just like a special sauce, special sauce. And so, uh, yeah, he's just missing that, that way to encapsulate the whole thing he does into that one unique methodology name. Spud fits good, but it doesn't really speak to the whole of it in one clean, like paleo or keto. Yeah, but he's got his belief brand, system within it. Plan. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so he's got his hero journey. That's really good, you know, in terms of like, who are we together, you know, and why, right? What is that audience overlap, you know, serial dieters, but specifically he talks about addiction, you know, and like the lack of control, 
Um, and then he can just be so specific with like emotional eating uh, and all of the pieces that he felt like crippling him over the years. And so he's got it like a perfect audience overlap with his story, who he used to be and who he's targeting. Um, and then from there, it's, you know, his unique method could definitely just have a name, but he's got a lot of the pieces. He's got his secret sauce. He's got a bit of his belief system. He even has a bit of a transformation journey because the mind does like to see it's like, okay, this is the method, but it's like, but what are we doing? Right? Like there's still, there's any hesitation. Yeah. If there's any hesitation, then they're still going to be hesitant to buy. Cause they're like, well, I don't know what we're doing. Like they just want to know, like, here's the game plan, right? The brain likes to have all the answers. It doesn't like to have any confusion or any anxiety. And if there is, then there's still going to be some hesitation. So we like to have a transformation journey and we like to think of it like a, a board game, like the game of life where you're like, you start here, you do these things until you're here. And then you go through all the life cycles. Like it just tells you, here's where you are on the map and where we're going. And so he does have a transformation journey, which shows phase one, we're going to do this. You know, we're going to start unlearning, discover the philosophical, psychological, and nutritional concepts that have been holding you back for too long. Um, turn around years of food-related challenges in literal days. Phase two, discover the tools and strategies you can use to completely change how you relate to food, lose weight, get your health and life back. Phase three, make e healthy eating a core part of who you are instead of just something you were trying to do. Um, I would make these a little bit more specific and probably name each one because it still isn't that clear of exactly what we're going to do. Uh, but it is nice that he shows the phases and it does show a bit of a game plan because, you know, it just gets it has a little more concreteness to what he's got going on here. So his methodology is like, I would say, like three quarters complete. So pretty good. So then if we look at the promised land, then you know, we see the promised land as like, well, where are we going, right? Because people need to see this, like, you know, humans are growth oriented. We want to see like, well, where are we going? What's possible for us? So yes, a big thing is that we have this pain. We want to remove that pain, right? That's often what will pull out the credit card and what will get us to sign up for things because the pain is strong enough. And this is, you know, so clear. His confidence is greater than my, you know, lack of confidence. And so, you know, he can make it seem like we can, remove that thorn, we can get going, right? We can remove that pain. But then it's also like, once you're in there, you really want to see what's possible. So he's talking about losing like over a hundred pounds. And so it's like, well, that's crazy. Cause that's part of his story. You know, that could be where we're going. Um, and so the promised land is really broken down into two pieces. Like what do we achieve? And then who do we become, right? What is that external transformation? You know, like I want to achieve this thing, whether it's lose a hundred pounds or like gain control of my eating or like remove addiction. But then ultimately it's, what is that internal transformation? Cause it's like every Disney movie, you know, they talk about uh, cars, you know, all he wanted was to win the Piston Cup. That was the achievement. That's all he set out to ever do. But then when he was like inches away from winning, then it was that moment of transformation where he went back and instead of winning the race, he pushed the other car over. And so they like finished together, but he finished second. And so it's like, that's the moment that like your heartstrings are like, oh my God, right? That's the piece that makes Disney, Disney. That's the part that like actually makes you care about the ending because it's that transformation of character. That's what humans love. And so we have to always have this, who are we becoming? This internal transformation associated with the external transformation. So that's why we wrap everything around an identity and about who you're becoming because that is ultimately more important than the achievement and so it's like you, you want to make a million dollars but ultimately you want to be a millionaire which is a huge change in your beliefs your attitudes your mindset how you see yourself how you see the world and so he kind of lacks both of these um and so he kind of paints to the things weight loss no cravings control but it doesn't ultimately say this is where we're going and we like to have a bunch of milestones, but ultimately like one four minute mile, some like thing that's really hard to break. So maybe it's like lose a hundred pounds and he could just only target weight loss, or it could be like, uh, for people with addiction and cravings. Right. And so there's no very specific promise land. We don't know who we become. Like, I guess you become spud fit, but that's not really like a, you wouldn't tell your friends, Oh, I'm a, I'm a spud fit guy. You know, it's like, you want something status inducing, and say like, this is who we are in this community. And this is what we achieve. This is where we're going. So his promise is pretty weak. It doesn't really point to this like big place that we're all going to be together. Unless you, you can tell anything. from his, you can tell from his copy, then a lot of this is like speaking to the why we do it. So it is a lot of 
mindset and emotional pain that they have because he's talking about how he dropped depression and anxiety because of this but it's also like you know without worrying about every mouthful like there's a lot of mindset stuff that plays into it so like the who are we becoming then yeah it's not just on the physical body but it's on the mental but there's no actual way to like put the bow around who we're becoming and what defining what that means so that's a huge gap because we know identity is the the starting place for all beliefs and behaviors and we want to shift that so we like to have an identity to wrap that around but yeah a current yeah. identity is emotional eater that's great yes yeah, so we like to have an identity on the front end to really target people because you're like you associate with if you're an emotional eater like that's a problem in your life and you probably recognize that that's a problem in your life and that's probably why you're seeking him out uh and so if he's calling that out and you already know that problem and that's a very real problem for yourself then yeah he's clearly going after that audience and shows how thousands of others, right? Herd mentality is such a big thing. We do things because other people are doing things. And so clearly he has the current identity. So if we look at the whole hero journey and all the ways he could have gone, <laughs> he could have easily just had a weight loss program because he lost a ton of weight, but there's also so much more nuance. And he realized the weight wasn't the bigger problem. It was the fact that he's an emotional eater. He has these cravings and addictions that would trump all of the diet plans. And so yeah, he, he says that on the sales page, I know reaching for a cookie after work is what's making me fat. I don't know how to stop doing it. So everything is about relating to an emotional eater. Like that's his story. He could cater to just about anybody with this plan because he believes every human can sustain off potatoes and will lose weight and all of the other benefits, but he's not trying to take to target everybody. And like, because everything looks so feminine here, like, look, he even has a plant, you know? So I think emotional eating, a lot of people identify specifically, like, I think it's a lot more of a feminine problem, at least like admittedly, openly. And so he's trying to cater exactly to the perfect audience. And so emotional eaters is exactly who he was, exactly who he's targeting. And he has a lot less competition by targeting emotional eaters than if you were to target weight loss. Yeah, so he's got the current identity locked down. So I feel like he probably does pretty well on this because of how specific it is. It's just about what the future identity and where we're going is is lacking and the methodology to get there. But it is a pretty bang and sales page. Like it's very clean. It's very nice. Are you tired of, right? No self-control, self-sabotage. So he knows exactly what to say. He knows what pain points to trigger. He knows how to twist the knife for emotional eaters. So that's why it's so it's so important to get the specificity of your story down because most people could have six or seven hero journeys depending on the audience that they want to target. But there's usually one, you know, we like to think about that quote where it's like, there's that metaphorical tap on the shoulder. This is what you're here for. Your whole life has been, you know, like all the shit storms that you've been through, all of the desires that you have. These are a compass, right? This is the compass and map for your life for almost like that metaphorical tap on the shoulder for like, when you overcome this, this is your moment, you know, to help other people with it. So clearly he has leaned into emotional eating because that was the core of his problem. There's all these other problems, but they could all stem back to being an emotional eater. And with emotional eating, he now knows exact pain points of that problem. So now he can speak exactly to that audience with the exact pain points that he had that he knows that they have. And so then he can really like speak to the problem, make them feel the problem include emotion and then say, well, this is how we're going to flip it, right? Here's this new opportunity. You've never tried it this way. And then the key is to making it sound like pretty effortless that anybody can do it. So again, like, are you tired of the calorie points, the traffic lights, you know, mindful techniques, meal delivery, you know, so expensive, you know, all of these things. Let me show you how, how to let food fuel your life, not rule it, right? So that's even part of his like, custom verbiage philosophy, you know, fuel your life, not rule it. That's a big part. And then relationship with food. That's a big part. Mm -hmm. And then even saying like these subtle things like has helped thousands of others, you know, I would even say has helped thousands of other emotional eaters and just like really lean into that EE, -E, those emotional eaters. And then his hero. So, yeah. And then he gets, yeah. The 2015 was at the heaviest and saddest. So he's just super honest, which is so key, especially in this industry. Tried every diet under the sun. Boom, 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 boom. Right. That's also a big part of the hero journey and like sales calls in general. They're like, what is your current plan? What have you tried? Right. You, we know the problem. 
but what have you tried? Right. And then they can say, I've tried this, tried this, tried this. Right. And you're like, okay, so we know what doesn't work for you. Now we're going to show them a new plan, a new opportunity. Right. So it talks about how he needed this thing for himself. This time I finally started to see results and then starts looking at like all of the wins that happened when, okay, tried this, didn't work, tried this, tried, tried this. Eventually I tried this thing, you know, nothing else worked. I tried this thing. I had to like find my own path and then boom, something started working, right? Never went hungry, lost 22 pounds, healed my clinical depression and anxiety, improved all of my blood markers. Best thing, I was finally free, right? So that's a huge emotion too. That feeling of freedom, that liberation, right? <clears throat> that feeling like you are finally back in control. The human brain loves control and then like spirals out of control when it feels like it doesn't have control. It's one of the like six keys to addiction. It's feeling like you have control over situations. Yeah, and he's not saying like, oh, I was confident in my skin and my I had to buy new pants, like all these things that speak to weight loss. We know everything is about emotional eating and willpower. So he comes back to, I was free from worrying about every mouthful and overthinking every single mouthful. That's that character transformation. Yeah, that speaks it, directly to his perfect audience based on his hero journey. And like looking at this website, then it's like everything speaks to the payoff from the other person, like the consumer's shoes. So it's what they're going to experience, what they're going to get, all the benefits. It's not showing there's this part, like I have this in my membership, I have this in my membership, I have this, like most people build these websites around features and benefits so that you feel like everything is inside there to get you this result. And he's showing these are the results you will get knowing everything you need is inside, which I'm sure he's gonna get to, but it's very much them focused. Yeah, and again, this is a good spot for his transformation journey. So all it takes is three steps, then I would really get into the three parts, like, again, his method is not that tight, at least on the front end to show like, we're going to do this, then we're going to do this, then we're going to do this. Um, so reset, rebuild, relax. Again, we love rule of threes and we love when there's an alliteration. So the three R's, but it still doesn't really tell me what we're doing. It like, we're going to reset, we're going to rebuild, we're going to relax, like relax is part of it. Like that's, it's, you know, not that's really like not step. really, not really an action, right? It's not really what we're doing. That it's like an outcome of having the control and, you know, being liberated from these cravings. So again, this could be a lot cleaner in terms of like, we're going to do like phase one is this stuff. Phase two is this, you know, eliminate these things. We're going to only do this. And then we're going to like add this or something like it could be more specific and just like help the brain understand what we're actually doing. It's good to see all of this, right? Like, okay, hot seat coaching, deep dive workshop. Again, like everybody uses these because it shows value, 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 right? All the things that you're going to get make it look expensive. Also, it shows the brain, this is what you have access to. So again, like they get to see inside without seeing inside. Then it gets into the offer. And the so offer, the like, again, he's trying to, we look at, just because somebody has a problem you can solve doesn't mean they want you to solve this problem. And if you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, like depending on where they're at, it's what they can afford. And he's charging $7 a month for his membership. Not only that, he's showing you how to save money on your grocery bill because potatoes are hella cheap. So he's very much catering to people who value money because they don't have it. Yeah, I don't think he even gets into the price point yet. But yeah, okay, so phase one what you'll learn. None of this is your fault. It's like, okay, well, that's just kind of validation. You don't really need to like teach it. You don't need to eat less to consume fewer calories, find out how to make willpower irrelevant. Like all these seem kind of fluffy. I would want to know like exactly what we're doing. And most people don't really come to learn. They just want, you know, people want to take a pill and, and be done with it. Right. People want the, um, the painkiller, not the supplement, the vitamin, the, you get it right. Like people just want the easiest thing. Like they don't really want to learn. They just want it done. So a lot of this is like, yeah, what you're going to unlearn. It just sounds like work, right? It just sounds like we have to do all of this stuff. It kind of sounds like there's homework. It kind of sounds like goals are a distraction. It's like, is that what we're going to, we don't really need that, right? Phase three, the emotional eating antidote. All right. That'd be dope, right? Again, it's like that you want to open tangible. a curiosity loop. Yeah. You want to be like, well, I want that, right? You need, that's the big part of like building up the offer and having these is, you need people to have these open curiosity loops. It's like when Netflix shows end, they'll open a loop and then close the episode so that you have to see the next episode and you're frothing for it almost immediately. 
And so the emotional eating antidote, that sounds cool, right? That sounds like something that we actually need. Be your own best friend. I don't know how eating potatoes is going to make me do that. But again, it's like, I don't really want to learn, you know? You don't have to love vacuuming. What do you mean? Why are we talking about vacuuming? <laughs> and so again, like these phases could be a lot more specific as to like what we're doing. Um, because again, like it's so simple that it, and simplicity is great. Like people want simple, people overcomplicate things. We just need simplicity. So he's got good graphics here. Again, like it shows a lot of value, 217 golden opportunities. I mean, it sounds cool, but I don't really know what that means. I do like how golden opportunities speaks to a potato. I also can't really Triggers read this library. I know, it, I know it says 730 and 90 day transformations, but I mean, you want your fonts legible for sure. Also, yeah, look it looks like playing cards. Also, what's the three mean? Yeah, I like how he's visually showing everything because it looks like tangible assets. Like you're getting all these tangible assets for $7. That's pretty good. And it's only $7. So he doesn't have to go into the value of each one. And then he's got extra bonuses, private ad free community. People love a community. We know that for sure. Okay. I would actually show the community though to make it look like you're missing out on something make it sound like a cool conversation going on that I'm not a part of. Also, sure. this is the bottom of this guy's phone. So he's holding it upside down. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's unless that's like, deck. wait, unless that's like the really old iPhone, in which case I think it was at the top, like iPhone, like three or something, which again, then it just, that's even worse. Cause now it sounds like this thing is so dated. Okay. Daily written support. Why are they on video if it's written? Yeah. Connect with your community. Right. Again. So it's like, the brain sees these things and like even if it consciously doesn't notice like something feels wrong right it's I not gonna think kill about... the sale but it's not gonna like amplify the value here because if you see a community if you see a picture of the community when you're talking about the community you're gonna want to be involved in that community because you're wondering what else is in there that's beneficial to you what are you missing people want to be a part of the party but if i see somebody on their phone i don't feel like i'm missing out on a party if i see a scroll of all these conversations i'm not a part of now I feel like I'm on the outside. Now it feels like some excitement, some life. Okay. I've already bought so many things that didn't help me. How will this be any different? You know, that's always good because you're like, you tried this, you tried this, but you haven't tried this. I know how I you feel. The, right? handling. the cheapest possible way to eat, the simplest possible way to eat. These are good. This is what people want. They want cheap. They want simple. So all the rest of it kind of has sounded like work so far where you're like, now we're finally getting to, it's like, it's not a lot of work. It's actually less work than what you're doing. That's huge. That should be a big part of this is like, you're actually taking a lot of time and money and energy off of your plate. Like he's like, I just throw potatoes in the air fryer and I eat whatever I want and however much I want all day. It's like, okay, sweet. That's what we want. So yeah, he really gets to the value. And I think this is the first time you see $7 a month. So he's really chalking it up to 400 and it's only seven so that's good because we definitely want a price anchor that's the point of doing this right is show a lot of value 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 show that it is really expensive and it can be really expensive but it's not going to be expensive because it's only seven dollars a month so then you're like oh that's a pretty sweet anchor because it's only like i don't we're, we don't do public math but it's a very little amount of 397 so you, you feel like this is a steal the only thing i would say is this should feel like it should be like a $50 a month membership. That's like right now, $7. Maybe it's like, oh, Black Friday is $7. And maybe like a few times a year, it becomes $7. Uh, or like, it just looks like a forever promotion. But there's also something about when you have a very cheap membership that looks like it should be expensive. Again, there's a disconnect in the brain. That's like, well, why? Like what else is, there's probably more things on the back end that they make money on. It's like the brain is always just looking like, well, this seems too good to be true then. Why is it only $7? So even if he went like $17, I think that would actually help conversions and his profitability. With a seven-day refund guarantee, that's good because people want to feel like um, you want to remove all of the risk from them. They don't want to feel like there's any risk. It should feel like an absolute no-brainer. That's why, again, it should have some kind of like urgency or scarcity or like it's only $7 for you know the next 10 minutes which is kind of an also shady marketing practice, but very effective, right? Like uh, there was a countdown timer, like ClickBank is is kind of famous for this, where you go to one of their pages, 
and the offer is like $10, but there's a countdown timer. And after like nine minutes, the page refreshes and it's now 50. But yet that's just like an automation thing that you can build in. But again, it's very effective because there has to be some sort of urgency or else it's like, I can come back tomorrow. I can come back next week. I don't need to start today. Holidays are coming up. Thanksgiving's coming up. Christmas is coming up. Easter's coming up. So. Yeah. And then common, health the seekers, two types of health identity. So yeah, this is also common dieters. practice. Is you can keep doing it the way you've been doing it, or you can try it the new way. I don't think that's yeah. that effective. It seems drop like drop a dress size. So definitely yeah. targeting women. Women. Yeah. Without really saying it. That's the power of branding. And he does have good, good branding. He's consistent with his colors and his fonts. And most people are all over the place with both, which also confuses people. Yeah. I would do this different. I would have a community for men, a community for women, and then like really lean in. And then some FAQs. How much can I eat? I would pepper testimonials in throughout just to give it more life. I would actually show, I would want to see pictures of people as well, like with their potatoes. I would collect like 50 pictures of people with their potatoes, just holding a, a bag of potatoes just to really be on brand and to show like everybody rallying for this, this same direction. We're all doing this thing together. So yeah, but I mean, pretty good, pretty good sales page. I'm just curious how many people are in and what his profitability is. Yeah. I wish we could find out. I like how one of his belief statements is don't eat your greens. You know, you got to have yeah. a hot take. Yeah, you got to have a prolific belief system if you want to stand out on the internet these days. So yeah, there's just some things he's missing. He's, so far, he's probably got like half of the, our, you know, try brand identity formula framework, like locked in. Specifically, he he's does. done a really good job with his messaging in terms of using the story to target the right people and have all of that spill over into all of the copy, into what the actual approach is, to what the membership is, to the belief system, to the method. Promise land could use a little bit of work. The methodology could be a little tighter. Sales sales page could be a little bit more bang, a little bit more lively, a little bit more, um, we're talking just on the nose, you know, specific to the right audience. Uh, and I, I, a lot of it is kind of graphics too. There's so many good graphics. I think it's just mostly in the, the actual sales part of it. Could use a little bit of love, but it looks like the dude's killing it. And even if he's not killing it, then that could be a traffic thing. Cause you know, that's always the problem is just having gas on the fire, but uh, he all, does a overall, good job. Yeah, a solid B plus on the whole thing. And an A minus on the branding. I mean, thousands of former emotional leaders, so. That's true. Do the math. He's doing pretty good. Yeah, even if that's 1,000 at seven bucks a month. I mean, that's why it's also good to know what success means for you. Because if you want, if you only want to make 7,000 a month, the US, you know, as a Canadian, that's 10,000 a month. That's really good. It's a six figure year, right? And so. It's probably not that hard to get a thousand people at seven dollars a month with this belief system. I just wonder how long they stay. So, but that's a whole different bag, you know. Yeah, we don't have access to the back end, and maybe he does have a new identity that he's wrapping the whole transformation journey around. Who knows? But at least he's doing a really good job of taking his story, calling in the right people, and branding everything accordingly. So that when they hit the website, they're like, This is what I've been waiting for, this is what I want to try. And he's the guy for the job. So good job, Andrew. Looking good. Yeah, and the potatoes falling into that grocery bag. I mean, Sexy. well done, sir. We love that. Must be Webflow. Oh, and this part. I love this. It's just always right there. Just come on. Just try it. Oh, just try it. It's Grab free. Just try it. Grab a potato. Yeah. yeah. It makes me want potatoes right now. So it's working. Oh, and a mission statement. That's good. We also love when, you know, again, it's that metaphorical tap on the shoulder. You went through this shit storm, you found some answers. So now you have this mission that you have to help these people, right? To make eating a healthy, to make eating a healthy eating uh, a core part of who you are instead of just something you're trying to do. Again, I would lean heavily into removing emotional eating. But again, it's like nuance. It's there. It's spelt wrong, but it's good. So yeah, solid work, Andrew. Good work. Oh, and a 2019 Spud Fit Challenge. Fuck yeah, there should definitely be Spud Fit Challenges. Well, he has a one day, three day, one day, 30 day, 90 day challenge. 
but it should That's... be more obvious about winners, maybe a wall of fame who won the challenge. How do you win the challenge? You know, where are their stories? There should be a lot more before and afters of challenge winners. I want to know what Michael looked like before and after. I want to know his story on the 2019 Spud Fit Challenge. Also, that was five years ago. Where's the new ones? This is right on the homepage. This is one of the first things you see. But it does speak to it. It's so bloody simple, easy, and honest. So Yeah, he should definitely have a visual wall of fame linked up. Because he has some testimonials, but you know he's got tons that you know aren't got being tons. seen. Yeah. So, so wrap an identity around it. Put them on display. Give them significance and status. Give them an That's... award. Have like a golden potato award. Shit, that'd be cool. And everyone's just holding this golden potato. Yep, a lot of magic here, but he's doing yeah. enough. It's cool stuff. Again, you can have a story that turns into a pretty sexy tribe. You just got to get the right messaging pieces in place. You know, really figure out who you are to your perfect audience based on, you know, all the hero journeys that could be. There's always one kind of underlying theme, right? So for him, it's emotional eating. That's the main problem that led to all the other problems. Even in his video from eight years ago, he talks about the weight, but he's like, it's not even the main reason I'm doing this. And you'd think it'd be because he's like, I am very disappointed with how I look and how I feel and the weight. And I'm like showing the weight. And he's like, but that's, it's not even the main reason I'm doing this. So clearly it's always because of the emotional eating. So what is that core of your story? How does that perfectly align with your audience? And then from there, it's about really building that methodology. So you're like, here's the name of my method. Here's the reason it works, the secret sauce behind it all. Here's the transformation journey. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And then we're going to hit this. Here's the achievement. We're going to all hit. We're all working towards this thing together. And this is who you'll become. You'll become a spud fitter, you know, like if you have those pieces in place, then all the rest can fall in. You can build a pretty dope sales page, good website. All the branding is in place there. You can have all of the content on the back end, the rituals that really build it up and do some really cool stuff with your tribe. So that's Spud Fit, baby. So that's how you yeah, take your story, find the uh, what makes you special and unique or just go try something crazy that no one's ever done. Because if it works, then it's it makes your marketing a lot easier. So yeah, but all the answers B+. are in your story. Yep. Spud Fit. There you go. Yep. So if you need some inspiration, okay. go to spudfit.com because the man is killing it. Yeah. Or go Shout hire his Spudfit. graphic designer because beautiful website. Beautiful website. Cool. All right. Yep. That's the, uh, there's, the, let us know if you guys like these because it's fun doing a uh, little audits. Yeah. So. so if you see somebody killing it, then send us a link. We'd love to hack it up. Yeah, and this is actually our longest live, I think. 45 minutes. Yeah, I guess we got a lot to say about this guy. Yeah, we like we like this stuff. So. All right. That's it. All right. That's the Thursday we'll at see two as we week. do. And remember, it's always sunny, it's always sunny when you're making, when you're making money. money. Let's Nailed go. It. All right. All right. See you next week.